referred to as purple drink. It's a combination of Sprite, cough syrup, and codeine, according to our Todd Archer, and first reported by Bleacher Report. When asked if McLean's career is over, head coach Jason Garrett said, we're focused on the guys who are here. The Cowboys are already facing a $250,000 league fine for numerous suspensions of late. Stephen A., is it time for the league to step in with this Dallas team? Absolutely. I definitely think that the league should step in. I don't think that they should leave the Dallas Cowboys to their own devices because as far as I'm concerned, they appear to be an organization ill-equipped to handle this, whether it's Jerry Jones being too preoccupied with marketing while trying to be the owner, the president, the GM, and to a lesser degree the coach because none of us really consider Jason Garrett a head coach. We consider him a, a coordinator or a puppet master. Pick one, pick one or the other. That's what we look at him as. And I think that the Dallas Cowboys history uh, validates everything that I've been saying now in hindsight uh, just just to uh, backtrack a little bit Ryan uh, because uh, we you weren't with us Monday in studio I brought up how the whole Dallas Cowboy thing locked arm and on with Dallas police officers everybody is trying to misconstrue that stuff trying to get me to apologize let me be the first to tell you there's no way in hell I will apologize <laughs> I meant what I said I said what I meant and I mean it today sorry, and all, because, I'm all, sorry. because all I was <laughs> trying to say was Obviously, it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we're all sensitive to that issue, and we need to stop the violence across the board. Yes. Violence against the police officers, violence on behalf of some rogue police officers against unarmed black people. Obviously, they, the Dallas Cowboys did the right thing. Yes. What I was saying is, in the throes of really, you know, being in the news because of something like that. How about when the cameras are away mm -hmm. and the news folks are away that you conduct yourself in a manner that shows that you're respectful enough for law enforcement officials not to break the damn law all the time? Because I got a list <laughs> of whole people. Now, I'm going to be nice. I'm not going to read the names and I'm not going to read the offenses, but I've got it's three. two pages? I, I, I got two pages <laughs> oh, good Lord. of activity on the part of uh, transgressions on the part of the Dallas Cowboys. Y'all keep messing with me, I'm going to start naming names all the damn time. Will I do it, Ryan? Will I do yeah. it? You know I'll do it. Will I'm not going to do it today, though. I'm not going to do it today. Do it but today. What, is that in me? Will you, I do it? You have don't, done don't, it and you will do don't it. Don't get me started. Do it again. <laughs> don't get me started. I, I mean, there's a, whole bunch, there's a whole bunch of names. Just do it. Whole bunch of names. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to bring up weed. I'm not going to bring up <laughs> violators because they used weed. I'm not going to bring up intoxicated manslaughter. I'm not going to bring up that because you're stealing cologne and a pair of drawers. That's his favorite. That's your favorite one, though. I'm not going to bring it up, okay? I'm going to leave it alone. All I'm trying to say is, in the end, the Dallas Cowboys have shown a propensity to be ill-equipped to handle matters themselves. When you got the head coach, Max, Ryan, coming out, sitting there, talking about, oh, I think we're fine. <laughs> we're a model franchise. I don't have the quote in front of me. But Jason we Garrett. We great culture. Great culture. Great culture. That was it. Great, great culture. culture. Great culture. <laughs> great culture. <laughs> great co For a great time. Your coach is actually quoted as saying that. That's all I need to say. Yeah, I'll leave it alone. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Go you, ahead. But when you say step in, right, when you say the NFL should step in, it would be an unprecedented move. Yeah. Not like the NBA saying, Chris Paul, right. you can't go to the Lakers. Right. The, the NFL doesn't do that. The owners run the league. They do. They run the league. But you look at the Dallas Cowboy decision-making. How many – no, it was great. I think all guys deserve a second chance. I think they deserve, if, if, if the league says they can play, I think they should get an opportunity to play on a team. But you can't give – everybody a second chance. You can't give a guy a second chance. You see that your culture is not good for rehabilitating him and say, but you know what? We're going to get this one too. And then we're going to get this one just like him. And this one that was suspended or kicked out of the league or mm -hmm. failed a drug test. You have to develop a culture of getting good people that are able to tutor these young men, that are able to help these young men, putting things in place where you win more of these situations yep. than you lose. Because right now, all of these guys that we are given passes because they can play football, the Dallas Cowboys are not helping them in life. Because if they go there and continue to do the same things, which it seems they do when they get to Dallas, they are not helping this football team and they are not helping these football players. And it's not the 90s. They're not getting Different. it done in the field anymore Different. either. Speaking of which, 2000, I, 20 years, per, I act like per, it's 10. Purple <laughs> drink. I mean, but after Jamarcus Russell, <laughs> you would think that's the cautionary tale. Just because you know it's not a powder or you don't smoke it or something, and, or you know, you come from a place where you see it around you, uh, kids, that's a bad idea. Purple drink. Uh, to, to, to paraphrase Stephen A, stay off the purple drink. Oh, 
Well, how about stay off the lean? <laughs> stay off the lean. Stay off the lean. Stay how off about the lean? That? Okay. But, but stay let me, off the lean. Let, let me say this. The Cowboys' misery is like mother's milk to me. Oh, when the Cowboys fans are having a bad time as a Giants fan. I love it so much. Again, like Eric Cartman in that South Park episode, I want to lick the tears off Scott Tenneman's face. Oh, Cowboys fans, you're tears. It's, it's delicious. I love it. That said, here's, here, here's the irony of the Cowboys right now, okay? This is the irony of the Cowboys. As Jerry Jones has ceded increasing control to his sons, to, to Stephen Jones. Yes, yeah, Stephen Jones. In fact... They are moving in the right direction in certain respects. What do I mean by this? They don't Instead draft of, Johnny Manziel? They, they don't draft Johnny Manziel. And I thought, oh, you got to play for the Cowboys. And, and people like me were wrong, right? And Stephen Jones got his way. They devoted a lot of resources to the offensive line, which is not always the sexiest thing to do for the fan base. But three out of four seasons, they used Bad their boys. first yeah. round pick Big time. on the offensive line. And Here is where their maker. culture goes Tony awry. Romo deserves credit for that because he implored them to do it. I, I, Absolutely. And yet, and they deserve credit for listening, you know? Right. And, and, but, but, but here's the, the where they go awry. They have a very high threshold for risk, the Cowboys. Now, that's like a kind of a, a baseball a hitter who, who swings for the fence, so he strikes out a lot, but when he gets a hold of one, hits it over the fence. But what they've shown in recent years is that's been counterproductive. Yes. The reason these guys are falling in the draft is that if the best, availabil if the best ability is availability, they their problems make them unavailable. They can't even get on the field. So, so the I think if they adjust their kind of threshold for risk, their tolerance for it, otherwise, in many respects, they're moving in the right direction. Now, in terms of should the league intervene, no, I don't think the league can intervene. But here's the real issue. If the league says these players are in the pool of players you can still employ, mm -hmm. the Cowboys understand their temperament is then we're going to go after those players because we feel their stock is undervalued. In fact, where they go wrong is in, value, is in evaluating the stock. The, their stock is properly well, valued. That's why they're here, available to you. Right. They're not going to help you win. Here, here's here's the way I think you're missing. I think you're letting the Dallas Cowboys off the hook, specifically Jerry Jones. Here is why. Jerry Jones is such a marketing wizard, such a marketing genius. He literally lives by any publicity is good publicity, even if it's bad. Because if you're talking about us, you're talking about us. And he has a fan base. That's the true reason why I hate the Cowboys. It's not because of the players. Dez and all these guys, I love these guys. I mean, you know, there's a lot of good brothers on the Dallas Cowboys. I don't wish for them to get in trouble. I don't wish for them to get suspended. I don't wish for them to lose unless they're playing against my favorite teams. I don't have that, co that problem with them. The Dallas Cowboy fan base is the worst in American history <laughs> because they are the most delusional bunch of people that I've ever seen in my life. You could be one, literally one in 15. The Dallas Cowboy fan base We'll wake up the next morning. We gonna be all right. Yeah. Y'all watch. Right. 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 We, right. we we gonna try. We win in the Super Bowl <laughs> next year. They're totally delusional. They were in the what? mess, Max, last year. What was their record like? Three and ten or something like that. They were, like, like, I'm, I'm talking right. about initially midway. They were like three and nine, three and ten. They lost like eight or nine straight. They were like this, man. We we we, we got, got a chance. This. We, we won't play away. We, we, we just won't play away. But they were still fighting. They were still fighting. I know that. I know that. I'm talking about the proudness of it all. I'm talking about sticking out their chest like we can still make the playoffs. Watch what we do. You three and nine, three hey, and ten. They still and hanging on old Troy, like, Michael they, Irvin, they, 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 Listen, they, they, they disgust. The Dallas Cowboy <laughs> fan base disgusts me. It's not the team. It's not even the owner because he's a brilliant businessman. It's their fan base. The worst, most delusional <laughs> fan base in the history hey, of American maybe sports. Maybe they sipping lean, too. can't stand them. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's, on let's can we finish this segment with lead. your cautionary tale? The, the stay off the lead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we, we will I leave it there. I can't stand the Cowboys More fan base. Take it's from the fan base. I can't believe you had to stay off the when lead. I can't believe you. When we come back, Stephen A. has no issue with Steeler Nation, though. Speaking of which, Antonio Brown will join us. He's going to sit Hold down with us here at the desk. Get some, Antonio, bring some bass in your voice. <laughs> I don't want to hear you sounding like Barry White. Well, you know. Oh, some well. treble. So you want Antonio Brown next for Steelers camp. <laughs>